Bad tempered badger. Uh, let's do the first. Let's do the first record for uh, for my channel because you know we were gonna um, uh, catch up a while back and we didn't. So yeah. uh, bad tempered badger, welcome back to my channel. It's good to see you again. I see you have a fort. I see you've updated your graphics. As you've seen, I've downgraded mine. Uh, oh, so uh, you're more realistic than I am. <laughs> well, uh, I I. I've just kind of I've set myself up in this cozy blanket for because I'm safe here from the council mob. Um, so I've set myself up. I've got some Star Wars games in the background. I've got a cup of tea. I've got some Battenberg. I'm set. Well, depending on on how we break up the videos, one of us is going to end up getting canceled from whatever we post from this <laughs> one. As a Christian and a, are you still an atheist at this point, or uh, did you switch sides? Still, still atheist. No, so I, don't, I, don't, I don't do much actively about it these days. Uh, I mostly do nature videos and uh, story readings at the moment. But uh, uh, if and when it comes up, I, I come from the perspective of, yeah, probably not. Have you noticed that pretty much all the, both not just the religious, but the anti-religious stuff just seems to be dead in the water? It's kind of dried up for the moment. I think because, uh, from the atheist end of it, there have been at least two like massive schisms in, in the whole, in quotes, community. Mm -hmm. uh, because trying to form a, uh, you know, trying to form your community just around not believing in something is not, a, is not it, it doesn't work that well. I agree. You, you, need, you need to agree on other things. So there are lots of smaller little communities that that have kind of split off from the they all agree on that one thing and then other than that they all have their own little groups um no i've noticed the exact same thing and it's it's actually kind of a bummer um the people who have stayed in the atheist community are are one of two uh, branches which is either extremist uh who won't even take uh, evidence as evidence if it contradicts them and it kind of falls into what we're going to talk about later on with the SJW progressive thing which is suddenly science isn't science suddenly facts aren't facts as long as they don't agree with your point of view they're not valid or relevant anymore and that's one half of the the atheist divide and the other half of the people who are still doing um, atheist apologetics are people like um, Oh, I want to say, um, <clears throat> what's his name? Something like Pine Tree. Uh, um, uh, anyway, uh, Pine, like... Pine uh, Snake? No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a guy who... Um, Theremin Trees? No, oh, he's... he's <laughs> what's his name? I can't remember now. I, I, I want to say it's like Aspen Pine or something like that. I don't know. It's some stupid name. <laughs> but he's he's really good and like they're doing actual apologetics and they're all kind of edging off of the whole new atheism thing because i've noticed that when i bring up new atheism on under my videos every single atheist will deny it ever happened and they'll say that never happened and so you got people like sargon of akkad who is now like completely thrown away the new atheism and he's like yeah it turns out there was some relevant uh, stuff in Christianity that would be great to actually keep around. So it's kind of weird how that, like, on one side you have, like, these hard atheists who won't accept any kind of proof, and then you have the other side that kind of spun off into this political atheism, which is, like, they're atheists politically, but morally and, and uh, in their own lives, they're like, no, we're still, uh, we're, we're still going to keep the judo-Christian uh, morality as part of our, our framework. So I think that's an interesting just, split. Everybody hates each other in, in in the political sphere. Well, you know, I'm 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 changing my channel, and I actually I wanted you on here last month when I decided to <laughs> change my channel, which is my religious videos are getting 25 views a video, where I used to get 2,000 mm -hmm. to 4,000 views a video. So I've become more intelligent about what I'm speaking of, but people just oh, yeah. aren't engaging in that kind of material anymore. They're just not. I think it goes through waves with the the religion and the atheism content. It goes, but uh, you go for a while where it's it's a, it's big, and then you go for a while where everybody's fed up with it, and then it'll uh, from the atheist side of it, it takes a while for there to be a build up of more people who have left religions, and then suddenly all the people who are still going 
they find those people and go, oh, I like this. And then it, it becomes a bigger thing again. I don't know if you get the same thing from the religious end of it, but uh, that's what I noticed from the atheist end of it. Well, what I've noticed is that that's exactly what happens on the religious side. Um, it's not only cyclical, but it's also um, the ideology changes. So I remember back when, and this is going to get a little political because we are going that way anyway. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was a teenager, I hated the, the far right because the way that we were being told is that we were being told that the far right was the ones who were, you know, uh, persecuting people, the ones that were uh, anti-literature, anti-science. You know, we got kind of told that was the thing. And mm. now, 30 years later, it's the far left that's anti-science and anti-literature and, and, and anti-free speech. And then if you go back and you look at who these conservatives were back in the day, they're not conservative Republicans. It's conservative Democrats who were pushing this, like Al Gore's wife, who were pushing this like super censorship stuff. So that thread has been there for a long time in, in the political sphere. It's just a shame to see it in the religious sphere. Like I don't, I don't understand why the rad trads in the Catholic world are against the Pope. I mean, I understand what they're saying. I, I get, I get what's bothering them, but I'm saying I don't. I don't understand their mindset of like, oh, we're going to be so Catholic that we're more Catholic than the Pope. You know, it just it doesn't it doesn't make sense. And then you got um, you have this really amazing thing happening on the atheist on the atheist on the Protestant uh, YouTube channels, which is they're embracing Catholicism and, and Eastern Orthodoxy and even to an extent uh, a kind of um, hybrid Judaism where they're like, okay, you know, all those traditions we rejected, turns out it's kind of necessary. So we're going to, we're not going to, they're not going to submit to the Pope, but they're like, let's, let's bring back some of that stuff. And then you have the, the same schism that's happening in, in the atheist community. You have this progressive Christianity that's like, oh, we're going to just reject all of the Old Testament and we're not going to have any authority. And it's not about uh, religion. It's about Jesus and what Jesus said is not necessarily recorded in the Bible, but somehow we know what his real <laughs> message was, even though we don't have any references for anything. And it's like, what is happening? Like, I mean, I get it. The atheist community, the religious community, we're all part of this world. We're all dealing with the same political schism that's happening in real life. But to see it enter atheism and see it enter science and see it enter... Uh, academia and see it enter religion it's just like no place is safe from this weird division that's happening uh, what do you think uh i i think i think like you mentioned with this this, this uh, i can't even speak <laughs> you mentioned with the cyclical nature of things i think the the cycle that we were in where it, it was all kind of you know there were the two very firm religious and atheism sides We've kind of cycled out of that because, athe well, it started off with the atheism plus thing, and then it kind of came back for a while, and then it's all split off again because nobody can agree with each other on anything apart from, uh, I don't believe in God or gods, and they can't necessarily agree on that because then we've got people arguing back and forth about the exact definition because we've got, we've got to... Well, let me ask you, I mean... Uh, you're Steve, and... still, still going with your... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, but I want to ask it because, like, I think I think what you just said is is very true, and I'm noticing it in the religious side of things. Do you think that the new atheism and the uh, atheism plus and the kind of we're going to change the definition of atheism to mean believing in nothing versus we're going to make re atheism a religion? You know, those two splits. Do you think that's a reflection of the greater cultural shift that's happening right now in our world that's being amplified by things like Trump and uh, I forget your prime minister's name and Johnson, I think Boris Johnson, right? Yeah, Boris Johnson. And, that's uh, the that's stuff it. going on with COVID, like it's being amplified right now, but it, I kind of feel like we are the problem. Like we are the ones who created this and like suddenly it's like hey we don't we don't want anything to do with what's happening but we're part of that conversation that led to this current situation i mean maybe i'm crazy with saying that but i don't know you tell me uh i'm gonna say in a sense yes 
I, I sort of agree because I, in the last, particularly since Trump in in America, you know, the last four years have been quite politically divisive, and that was building long before Trump took over. And we, we've had the same thing over here with successive conservative governments. Um, you know, they, they, they came in kind of unwanted because, you know, one prime minister left and then we had one that was essentially an unelected prime minister for a while. And then, you know, she left, we had a nice uh, general election and, oh, look, now we've got conservatives again. What happened there? We were supposed to be getting rid of them. Uh, so, but the problem is, well, the problem here, I think, the right, you know, the political right is much more united than the political left, not in terms of agreeing, but in terms of willingness to support a candidate that they don't entirely agree with. Whereas the political left uh, won't do that. It's, it's more just kind of, okay, I, I can't in good conscience support this candidate. There's, this other candidate is much closer to my thought, uh, to my opinions but is very unlikely to actually be elected. So we're going to split our votes all over the shop and end up with a load of uh, essentially an, an inability to form a majority. I, I believe the word you were looking for was cow manure, but yes. Um, <laughs> well, we have the same thing going on here, but like for instance, uh, to go with the conservative thing, technically speaking, I'm a conservative and I, uh, I made a video recently talking about how it's weird to be considered a conservative, conservative and even consider myself conservative, considering that my political views haven't shifted. My, mm -hmm. my, my religious views have shifted to the right, so religiously I'm, I'm more traditional. But mm -hmm. my political views have stayed in the same spot, but it went from being a, a left um, ideology, I guess, to being a center ideology, to now being considered a conservative ideology. And it's like... How do people like Meghan McCain and myself, who believe in gay rights and uh, want, uh, you know, to open up the, the, the world to, to more conversation and want science to be affirmed and validated, how are we now on the right just because, you know, we like things like guns or we like, you know, mm -hmm. to go hunting or, you know, we like things like science? Like it, mm -hmm. it doesn't, I don't understand how that shift happened. I know that it happened. I'm not denying the shift. It's yeah. just a really I go, weird I shift. I got what you're saying, I think. I've, I've been noticing a similar thing from my perspective, which is that um, I I was having a conversation with some, I'm not going to point out who, but I was having a conversation with somebody a little while ago, and it, it kind of became just... What, what what happened to you? Referring to me, you know, what, what happened to you? you? Why why are you all suddenly all all, you know, free speech advocate and all this business? Well, I thought you were all, <laughs> yeah, I thought you were all kind of progressive and stuff. I'm, I'm there pointing to like the first video on my channel from years ago, just going, you remember the first video on my channel where I was pointing out about uh, you know police power overreach and how it was going to affect freedom of expression. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I haven't, you know, I haven't shifted on that. There's a few things that I've changed my mind on, but that's not one of them. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I really have exactly what you're talking about. I really have noticed the exact same thing, and I honestly, in my mind, don't know what to do with it. Um, like I, I find, no, go ahead. Yeah, I find myself in a difficult position there because I am more on the left than I'm on the right, politically speaking. Because a lot of the classically left-leaning positions I am in support of, like, uh, uh, well, being British, I support uh, healthcare being paid for by the taxpayer because we've got this lovely NHS, which means that if I go out and, uh, and break my leg, uh, I can go to the hospital and get a cast put on it and then not be in debt to the hospital for the next 15 years. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I support things like that. I support, I'm in support of abortion and in support of various other things. But I find myself, I'm getting, the way that things are 
I, I'm not sure if things, I don't think things are shifting either to the right or to the left. I think that both sides are shifting further away from each other, more in the middle just by virtue of being further from the edge. I kind of disagree with you, and I, I here's and here's how. I feel like it's actually not so much going away, although that could be happening too. I feel like it's shifting. Like, in other words, the things that used to be considered right are now considered left. Things that used to be considered yeah. left are now considered right. And let's go with, uh, you know, because obviously we're on different sides of the political and religious uh, spectrum here. Um, and we'll get into this actually in, in the next video when, when this one comes down, mm -hmm. uh, is that, you know, if I look at how I present myself, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm married, I, uh, I'm Catholic, um, I'm, I'm very masculine, I like weightlifting and fighting, and um, I play video games, and I'm on YouTube, which is a post, because I guess is also now a patriarchal thing, um, <laughs> it, and all this, like, stuff to where, like, you're going to yeah. go, like, okay, straight, male, cis, white, and it's like, no, uh, like, I'm Hispanic, I just happen to speak English with the correct accent, like, I mean, like, mm -hmm. I don't even freaking know what that means so like <clears throat> but for at least for an american like i can't support biden and i don't like trump like what am i supposed to do like as a religious person i'm, I'm not pro-abortion so i can't support mm -hmm. trump i can't support biden there uh as a south texan i'm pro-gun i have literally had guns save my life from wild animals i don't want to mm -hmm. live in a world where a snake or a bobcat or a, or a you know a uh, coyote kills me. Okay, I I like living. What can I say? You know, like, there's like these weird like mm -hmm. conservative values that I don't think have to be conservative. Uh, and I I made a video recently as as I'm transitioning out of the religious stuff. I made a, a video recently talking about my politics, saying how like who says pro life has to mean anti abortion? Can't pro life mean like you know, pro adoption and like pro healthcare. Like, there's so many more aspects to this conversation than what's allowed on YouTube. It's, it's yeah, very I weird. It's this, I, I'm having a similar problem because while I, uh, you know, I'm. If, if I was in America, I would be more Biden than Trump in that, in the last, in this, this most current election that's just happened. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you know, I'm I'm pro-abortion. I'm I'm I think Trump is a is an environmental disaster. Uh, I'm you know, I'm another thing that I think we may disagree on from a religious perspective is I am pro-assisted suicide. Um, but I find myself I'm also. The more I consider it, and the more I think about it, I'm becoming more. I I used to be, I used to be vaguely kind of pro-gun in terms of you know America's got them, it works for them, whatever. I'm here, it also works for us. But although we do occasionally you know farmers or whatever, but um, now I'm I'm becoming more kind of actually on that one issue. And this is something that gets me thrown out of the left, you know, in, in the conversations. Is I'm thinking actually we could do with both of both a first and second amendment in the UK. And that that all, all, all my left friends are there like you what? <laughs> well, I mean, it's become political suicide to say something like uh, on the right. Okay, we need more gun control. Like they automatically think taking away guns, and it's like no, we we shouldn't have crazy people with guns, and we have digital locks now, and we have you know biometrics now. Like let's use that so that people can't use guns illegitimately, and people. Don't I'm want I'm, to hear I'm pro that. control, pro introducing with controls guns in places where they aren't currently. Well, I, not I'm not personally that into guns. Mm -hmm. I, I I like them in films and I like them in, in fiction. Yeah. If we had if we had the Second Amendment in this country, I probably wouldn't have. I I think I would at most have some kind of like small caliber revolver or something. Just, just like this is my emergency gun. 
Well, I know, have if, a... if, if the zombies come knocking or something, I've got something. But uh, I would much rather have like a, a sword cane or something. I have a CO2 pellet gun that can that can kill a small bird. Um, mm. But uh, like last night, there was a uh, something fell on my roof, and I had to go check it out. And like I didn't think it was anything, but I, I had to check it out. I didn't go grab my pellet gun or anything like that i grabbed a uh i have a uh, a roman gladius i grabbed my gladius and i walked out there and i was like shit it's just gonna go down i'm gonna have fun i'm gonna make sure that i'm yeah. i'm enjoying myself if i'm gonna be in a fight to my dead to my for my life yeah no i i i generally go for a uh the kukri i have over there <laughs> but like okay so like and, and again I, i'm building into the conversation we're gonna have a, a little bit yeah. later which is, I personally believe in gay rights. I understand mm. that in the Catholic Church and in Christianity in general, gay marriage cannot be allowed. Any Christianity that says that gay marriage can be allowed within the church hasn't read the Bible. You have to completely distance yourself from not only what Jesus has said, not only what Paul has said, but also from what the Old Testament has said. So when you get into these like progressive offshoots of Christianity, it's like, you're not you're not speaking Christianity anymore. You can say you're religious, but you can't call yourself Christian. And I don't know if you saw, but you, there was some really nasty stuff going on here in the U.S. where, uh, just like what happened in Mexico about 30, 40 years ago, the hmm. these Marxist groups were going into Catholic churches and breaking statues. And it, it was not being reported that they were Catholic statues. They were just saying, hey, statues are being destroyed. And nobody was nobody in the news was saying they're Catholic statues that are being destroyed. They're Catholic saints that are being knocked down. And nobody mm. was reporting it that way. Everybody was reporting it as in like it's this like you know colonist. Well, the colonizers, a lot of those guys are Catholic. Like, hi, I'm half Spaniard, and half Native American. Like, there's there's a reason that happened. Like, there's an yeah, actual exactly. history to that, you know. Particularly, as I understand it, down towards the south end of things. Yeah. Know, like and, and, Mexico, and you're coming up in Texas and all the southern states. So, like, I don't understand how they expect, and by they, I mean th this movement that's happening. I don't understand how they expect Hispanics and Catholics and Christians to support them. Like, almost every Christian I know has gotten on board with, we're going to support gay rights, we're going to support... Um, you know people's uh life condition and we're gonna not reject them just because of their inclinations like almost every person's right. on board with that now it that wasn't the case 20 you. years ago you know what i mean mm. yeah i do know what you mean i have a question for you uh as person with um heritage from you know mexico and that kind of stuff yeah what is your view of Latin with an X on the end. I hate that it, word. and everyone I know hates it. Um, <laughs> I, where I work, almost everyone speaks Spanish, and I, I one time jokingly just to see, I just wanted to like drop drop it just to see what yeah. how people would react. Because I'm like, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, look, uh, I, I'm Catholic, but I live in a Catholic community. It's possible that I'm just yeah. you know being inculturalized, right? So I'm like, maybe I'm wrong about the Latin X thing. I don't like it, but maybe other people do. So I just dropped it. I was just we were in a in a in a meeting or something. And I was like, "Hey, what do you guys think of Latinx?" The whole thing stopped, <laughs> and everybody just was like, "They were calling it white." First off, they're like, "That's a uh -huh. white thing." We're Mexicans here. We don't we don't talk like that. We we don't do that kind uh -huh. of crap. And then, and then they were like, "It's disrespectful." The Hispanic women, the Hispanic women. Mm -hmm each one pulled me aside separately to yell at me for daring not to use the Latino or Latina thing. Now, uh -huh. don't get me wrong. <laughs> there are people on my Facebook page. There are some people, uh, Hispanic women, who do use the, the, the Latin X. But when I dropped it into a, an, a Hispanic community that's progressive, they all vote Democratic, and I just dropped it like just to see what would happen. No one... I'm talking like a good 50 people, 60 people. No one was okay with it. So no, no, it's mm. it's not a it's not a thing that Hispanics like. It's a thing that would. Mm, go ahead. Would you describe it as uh, an insult? 
yes and no. It's an insult in the way that So, how do I put this? <laughs> when when a white person comes to where I live, there are three things that we will do to the white person if we like them. And I mean okay. as a group. We'll take yeah. them to a football game. And by football, I mean like American football. Yeah. We'll make them wear our sombrero, and we'll make mm -hmm. them drink tequila till they'll puke. And at some point, we will re-Christian them a, uh, a Mexican. Uh, you're one of us now. And after that, we consider them Hispanic. We take them to everywhere. We, you know, we, we, we teach them tamales and, and we teach them, you know, All Mexican right. tamales, American. Like we, we, we enculturate them into our group. Mm -hmm. uh, and that happens down here. Uh, just to be very clear, the area that I live in is called the Rio Grande Valley. It's, it's over <laughs> a million Mexicans. And by Mexicans, I mean like half, uh, you know, people like me, Texan American. Uh, there's mm -hmm. over a million of us here, so it's it's a very large Hispanic community, but it's not it's not homogeneous. Uh, we are mm -hmm. there's everyone from my complexion to much darker. I don't think any lighter. community is entirely. Yeah. yeah, but if you're not Hispanic down here, you're gonna face reverse racism. You're you're gonna mm -hmm. get uh, a little bit of reverse racism because it's such it we are such a large Hispanic community that you mm -hmm. that being white down here is a rarity. It's kind of like going to Japan and being blonde. You know what I mean? Like people are going to notice. Yeah. People are going to be like, hey, what's what's going on over there? And it's that kind of thing. So would you would you say that uh, how how common is Spanish speaking in uh, in amongst these communities? This any, community, you know what I mean? OK, so I live uh, I'm going to be very careful how I say this. I don't want people showing up yeah. at my doorstep. I live <laughs> uh, um, on the north side of town. If you and I live far north, I'm not. I'm not like like a little bit on the north side of town. I'm far north on the north side of town. You just go two streets, uh, two two big streets that way uh, to the south, mm -hmm. and you will start hearing Spanish at every single restaurant, at all. Mm -hmm. You go three miles south from there, you won't hear English anymore. You go another mm -hmm. mile south. And you won't have people who are able to speak English. And that's still on this side of the border. That's still on the American side of the border. So okay. it's it's very prevalent. Uh, I go to church here. All the masses are in Spanish. Restaurants are in Spanish. Um, as far as Hispanic people are concerned, I don't speak Spanish. But I can probably speak a little bit more Spanish than you can, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> So it would say enough to kind of get by. Anywhere but where I live, yeah, I have enough Spanish to get by. Anywhere, if you send me anywhere else where people have to speak Spanish, yeah, I'm fine. But down here, right. <laughs> being Hispanic, they want the Hispanic accent, which I clearly don't have. So yeah. um, they will, I will say the word perfectly, and they'll be like, "That's incorrect." But if someone from up north, especially with a lighter complexion, says the exact mm -hmm. same word. They'll they'll be like no that's perfect, uh, but the expectation is oh, yeah. a little bit higher just they because they of expect mine. you because yeah. of your face right. to say it how it, how they say it right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I can give you the perfect example: taco and taco. Okay, taco is what a white person mm -hmm. says. Taco okay. is what a yeah. Hispanic person says. That's just and they want that with everything. Mm -hmm. So once this accent starts coming out, there is. And if my southern starts coming out, I start getting a little southern draw. Nothing. There's there's no there's no coming back. There's no. Uh, I screwed that. <laughs> you know, right. ac accents up uh, in um, up where you're at. Let me ask you. I mean, you got some of this. You know, the the immigration problem going on with Islam and Muslims and and people coming from different cultures coming in. You just had the yeah. whole controversy with cuties that happened. So, like, American culture is becoming aware that there's kind of a cultural shift happening in France and Europe. How are you guys handling that? Because I know for us, it's complexion. I'm pretty sure for you all, it's more accent. Like, you can tell where someone's from by the accent of their community. So how do, how do you guys handle dialect and, and class, uh, let's call it uh, imperfections, class uh, differences? 
That's complicated. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me put it this way. Uh, you can you can get a vague idea from just accent. You can get a sort of idea of both where, where somebody is from in the country and what their rough sort of education level is. And their rough education level, although it's becoming less in some things, roughly correlates to their social class. Because uh, somebody who goes to the fancy universities that you have to pay for, you, ha you have to pay for all of them in a sense. Um, well, you, you, you have to pay for all of them. But the ones you have to pay a lot for, you'll, you'll talk with your tongue further back in your mouth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like your tongue's trying to escape the poor people. Um, and as well as that, there's there's tension, uh, particularly now with Brexit, all the borders, there's tension. There's tension between Northern and Southern Ireland, and there's tension between Scotland and Northern England. Uh, there's... They're back in the Troubles, it used to be, you know, if you, if you talk like I do in southern ireland you get stabbed um now it's more uh, it it became less and it's becoming more again i i, I can't confirm uh, whether you'll get stabbed but there'll definitely be tension let me let me ask you though because uh, you know something that we talked about earlier and i, I kind of said it indelicately but uh, you gave me an opportunity right now in that conversation to bring mm -hmm. this up again which is you now have Christians arguing for gay rights and you mm -hmm. have uh, Hispanic people and black people arguing for this kind of colorblind uh, let's just accept everyone and enculturate everyone. And then you have, yeah. you know, this like movement of white people saying, no, we can't do that. You know, you have mm -hmm. you have the gay community itself fighting itself with yep. the with the turf versus you know gender inclusion versus whatever the heck else is going on and you you have on the uh on the political side you have this weird thing going on where it's like oh no critical race theory is how it works now so now we can't be colorblind now that you're hispanic we have to speak spanish to you if you speak spanish to me i'm gonna look at you like you're an asshole you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't I listen to my accent. I do I look like I'm I'm elegant or fluent in, in Spanish just because of my skin color? I grew up eating, you know, burgers and pizza. You know, like it's not like it's, it's not like you can know something about me just because I happen to be a Texan or a Mexican. Like you don't you know what I mean? Like it's such a weird yeah. like it's an element. They're trying to bring segregation back essentially. In an ugly way. They're, they're trying to they're, they're, try, they're trying to do positive segregation. I don't they're, get they're, it. They're trying to they're trying to all, all these all these barriers that that we've managed to like pull down between everybody. They're trying to put back, but in a, in a way that they think is good, and it's not good. <laughs> That's my thoughts on it. It's it's bullshit. I'm I'm gonna show you something. And unfortunately, this mm -hmm. I had to replace because as a teenager, I played with it. I really shouldn't have. This is a uh, real Japanese katana. Authentic. Mm -hmm. Real, real. Yeah. Uh, it's over 100 years old. It, it, it was forged yep. in Japan. It's the real thing. It's a war sword. It was used in battle. It mm -hmm. has blood stains on it. Okay. I'm guessing it's better balanced than mine, then. <laughs> My grandfather got this as a gift. My grandfather worked on an American military base as a barber and as a janitor, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. This is not culturally appropriate, okay? He's not, he, he, he wasn't, he's, he's not Japanese. He's not, mm -hmm. uh, he's not, you know, American. You know, he's, 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 a, he's from San Luis Puerto Si. He's, he's very Mexican. Mm -hmm. This is part of my family history. This is three yep. generations. This sword Cult, has been in my family. Cultural interchange is part of is part of people. And I just I don't I I can't say the town I live in for obvious reasons, but it's an Irish town. It's an Irish Scottish town. Mm -hmm. Like 
you can't take that away from me because you don't like it. Like it, it's just yeah. so weird. Not you. you well, know I, I'm I, I know what you mean. I, I I play African drums because of various reasons. But uh, I, I have African drums because I learned it from people who learned it directly from people in Africa. You know, went there and learned it from them, and then they, the people I learned it from. You know, some of their friends from Africa came over to teach all of us of that stuff, and it was, you know, it was a whole thing. Um, that's part of me. That's part of who I am. I am not African. <laughs> well, you know, it, look, uh, I I love comic books. I have I have friends who are are black who love comic books. I have friends who are Asian who love comic books. And you're gonna mm -hmm. tell us that now it's a white thing? Like, I'm I'm sorry, no. you're you're no. a jerk. You, you cannot yeah. go around telling me that I'm being culturally oppressed because I like Wolverine. Yeah, I like a short, <laughs> tiny Canadian with big muscles. Guess what I am? I'm a short, tiny Texan with big muscles. I can relate to him for other reasons than his race. Yep. I, I think I think people, I think that that particular movement, the whole critical race crap, my view on it is it's, as I said, crap. But as well as that, it's trying to make race and, to a secondary extent, culture, but mostly race, the primary defining characteristic of everyone it deals with, when it should really be the least interesting thing about someone. Someone's background in terms of who they are should be interesting, their their you know their their physical and racial appearance can be an indicator of that and it's definitely a part of who they are but it shouldn't shouldn't you shouldn't look at that and then try and define them based on that just it's 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 worse than pretending it doesn't exist um just to put a bow on it so we can finish this yeah. part yeah um, <laughs> is, idea. is uh <laughs> is that and to pull it back to religion, which is kind of where we started, mm. you know, like I said, like now you have Christians arguing for gay rights, but you have athe you have atheists arguing for no free speech. Like it's a weird divide. It's a mm. very weird thing that's happening. You got, you got atheists essentially arguing for blasphemy laws. Yeah, no, it, literally, like literally, like oh. if I say the wrong thing yeah. about gender, which is going to be our next conversation, if I say the wrong yeah. thing, you're over. Yeah, Since and, when? and it's like, the same, same with same with Islam. How if you, if you piss off Islam, you're fine. Like, like, look, and like, let let's talk about the troubles. Protestant mm -hmm. and a Catholic, atheist yeah. and a Christian, are having a friendly conversation and agreeing with each other. There's more to us than our religion, our our race, our our gender. Those are aspects of our lives. But they're not the mm. most important thing. If I'm a decent human being and you're a decent human being and we both love each other, everyone mm -hmm. else, fuck off. And I'm sorry if, <laughs> if you don't use bad words on your channel, but it's just like for real. Oh, I do. I most definitely do. <laughs> I've been trying not to. <laughs> sorry, for this, I ruined everything. But... I'm sorry. I just, I just killed you. <laughs> no, I, I, I've, 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 I've done at least three so far. <laughs> but but you, get what, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Am I making sense or not? No, I, 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 I agree with you. On, on at least that. <laughs> All right, so let's assume that this is going to be on my channel. Everyone, thank you for watching. I really oh, you want me to put that one? You want me to put uh, the other we one? We can on flip one, it. Yeah. I don't care. Either one. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you, can, you can take the safe one. I'll take the dangerous one. Uh, uh, we'll, everyone we'll, we'll watching, it out. peace, like, and subscribe. Uh, my channel name is changing. As you can see, it now says Alpha Centurion 4. If it you look for does. that channel, you're going to find it, but it's a comic book review channel. Uh, I'm not closing down this channel. But religion is no longer going to be the center topic. I started talking about the Bible as a literary work, and I commented on one atheist video, uh, uh, Godless Cranium, and suddenly I became an apologist. It's been two years. There's more things I want to talk about than just the Bible. Oh, Badger, anything goodness. you want to say? Oh, Godless Cranium. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I am, as you have probably noticed from the, the words under my fabulous blanket port here, Bad Tent and Badger, I, uh, I have some atheist content on the channel. I also have some political content on the channel. Uh, and I have a lot of nature stuff, just, just cameras out in nature filming animals doing things. 
Uh, these are British animals. Uh, I also have um, some some conservation related content to do with that because that's one of my major things. Is I'm a conservation volunteer, uh, and I'm trying to get into doing some story reading. I've done a few nice ones to do with the whole SCP universe. Um, I'm trying to do some more of those. I'm trying to do a few collaborations in that. And I just like talking to people. The reason I got into this is so I could have interesting conversations. Uh, hopefully this was uh, cool. Yeah, so far it's good, going pretty well. So yeah, check out my channel. Uh, occasionally I put stuff on it. I haven't been regular for a while. Uh, in terms of my channel, not, uh, uh, not in terms of other stuff. Although, uh, no, not going into that. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to put some more stuff out in the near future. All right, I'm just cut it there.